as you can see, by running that single command, saying make a Grails application for me, a whole lot of activity suddenly happens. The Grails scripts start right up. They start in a directory. They build an application for me, building a whole bunch of source folders and a folder for controllers and services and domain classes. And I have views with layouts inside them internationalization, configuration, a whole set of testing directories, including unit testing. And one of the things that's meant by configuration or convention over configuration is that every Grails application created builds an identical structure to it. We'll customize it by adding our own domain classes or controllers or services, but if you encounter a Grails application from someone else that you've never seen, the layout will be exactly the same. You'll just have to go into the appropriate directory and figure out what they did. Then there were a lot of other, well, there's a lot of other code generation that went on, and eventually I wound up with what I have in here is a project called Quest. And in here I have a controllers directory and a domain directory, etc. So Grails tends to favor domain-driven design. That means you build your classes representing your, your domain objects, your, your students or your course or what have you. And then Grails favors this. And once you have this, then you can start customizing what to do with them and building your business logic and everything. So let me build a new domain class here. So let's see if I click on this. Whoops. Cancel here. Uh, right now the issue I'm having, and it's not really much of an issue, is that uh, I'm running on two different screens. So when I click on a button here, it pops up a window on a different screen. Let me do this a slightly different way. Let me say under Grails Tools, to create a domain class this way, and that way I think you can see it right there. So I'll call this uh, com.skillbuilders.quest. And then I want to make a class called a quest here. And again, that triggers a script to start happening. And now we see the code that was generated. I'm hoping this font is big enough. If it turns out this font isn't quite big enough for you to be able to see, please let me know and I'll increase it another size. This is a class that's going to represent my quest. Well, quest should have a name. And there we go. I'll get to this constraints block in a moment, but frankly, I already have enough in order to execute my quest, in order to run the project. Run as a Grails application. So let me let that start up. There are three different environments. There's a development environment, there's the testing environment, and there's a production environment. Basically what changes in those cases is which data source you're going to use, and also the ability to um, reload classes on demand. I now have a URL. This is using an embedded Tomcat server. I didn't have to set that up or anything. It's already built. And when I click on this, you see I have Grails application, available controllers. Oh, I forgot to make a controller. Well, that's not good. Let's put in a controller. Uh, wait a minute. Under Grails tools, create controller, and I will call this uh, com.skillbuilders.quest.quest again, and that will build a Grails controller. And now I'm going to use one of these really cool built-in capabilities, and that's called scaffolding. This says to Grails, I want you to generate a set of web pages to create an index and update and find quest objects. All I had to do was to run that, this was to create this single line and save it. And now I think I can go back to my web page here and hit refresh. And now there's a controller. And when I click on that link, there I have a web page that says home and new quest, and there's an ID and a name. And if I say I want a new quest, I could put in a name, which is to seek the grail. And now I've created a quest, and I can edit that and say, nah, let's change that to a lowercase g or something, and go update. And it's there, and I can go to the quest list, 
and I see there's my quest. And if I make a second quest, which is to learn about Grails, then I can go back to my list here, and I can order them by name by clicking on the name column alphabetically or reverse order it there, or go back and order them by ID or reverse by ID, whatever you like. And I can even go to the Learn About Grails one and say, nah, let's delete that one. And it'll say, are you sure? And I say, OK. And there you go. I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of code for, or a lot of results for basically putting in one line of code and telling it to use the dynamic scaffolding. All of those web pages are dynamically generated now. This is a really comfortable way to work while your domain model is still changing. Once your domain model settles down, then you can build the static scaffolding. That's the one where you'll see all the code and start making changes to it. I'm going to build this one up a little bit more, but then I'll switch to an application that I've already constructed to show you some of the power that's available in this. Okay. So, yes, sir? Can I ask you a question from Jennifer? Sure, absolutely. Uh where is it currently storing this data? Ah, good question. Inside the configuration area is a file called datasource.groovy. This is all Groovy code, by the way. And this is showing us that embedded inside of Grails is an HSQL database. Hypersonic SQL, or just HSQL, as they call it. That is a pure Java file-based database. So it's storing it, actually in this case, it's storing it in, me in a mem memory version of this. So everything's in memory right now. It's not being saved in a database at all, really, other than this in-memory version, which does support queries and everything. In my more fleshed out application, I'll show you a, a, a bigger version that actually uses MySQL for the database. This is MySQL. Changing databases is very simple. You just modify the settings in this file and drop the database driver into the lib directory, and you're all set to go. Were there other questions? Um, that's it for now, Ken. Thank you. OK. Uh, if, by the way, the, if one of the questions inevitably is, does this work with Oracle? And, and the answer is absolutely. One of the reasons Grails chose Hibernate is because Hibernate is the leading object relational mapping tool in the Java industry. And basically, it can work with pretty much any database in existence. I, I have to caveat that by saying I'm talking about relational databases here. If you want to work with the so-called NoSQL databases, the non-relational types like uh, CouchDB or MongoDB or some of the others, there actually are plugins that let, lets Grails work with those too, but that's not going through Hibernate. All right, so much for our quest. You know, quests really need a they need tasks to do. Oh, before I do that, actually, let's, let's take a look. If I make a new quest and say I forget to put in my name and I just click Create, then it says, sure, I'm more than happy to create a, a quest with no name. And there it is. And notice, by the way, it's got this uh, ID auto-generated as a primary key for the quest table, uh, which is an auto-increment right now. This, again, can be customized however you want. But I don't really want there to be quests without any names to them. That doesn't make any sense. So this is where the constraints block comes in. In the constraints block, I go, uh, all right, by the way, name should be blank is false. Now, this is groovy code, because really what I'm doing is saying that name is a function. Name's a method. It's short for, I could put in parentheses like this and say I'm using name as an operation, and the argument is that the blank property of name should be false. The parentheses are optional inside of Groovy. Now when I save that, it tries to refresh everything, and sometimes that works and sometimes it does not. Uh, you saw that by adding a controller worked just fine, but when you change the domain model, most of the time I have to restart the application. Let me give it a try anyway. I'll put in a new quest. Uh, see, it, it didn't. It didn't. Uh, it wasn't happy with that. So let me go in here to my Grails app, and I will stop the Grails application, and then uh, let me restart it. Uh, run app for uh, the quest here. Again, this is unfortunately happening on my other screen. I'm not able to drag it over, but it's just a shortcut way to start up the application. 